Hello all. So good afternoon once again, and we have now Chintan. He would be delivering talk on creating apps with Jetpack Compose. So hi, hi. Chintan. First of all, yeah. welcome. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, the stage is all yours. Yeah. All the best. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, so hello everyone. Yeah. So myself, Chintan. Today, uh, I would be delivering a talk uh, about Jetpack Compose. Like uh, recently, you might have got to hear about a lot of things about Jetpack Compose. Like uh, it is a new UI, UI toolkit, and maybe it will be replacing XML and etc. So let's uh, start with our today's session. Uh, I will be sharing my screen now. OK. So I hope everyone is able to uh, see the screen. So basically, uh, we are going to talk about this creating apps with uh, Jetpack Compose. Uh, so that is the talk which I'm going to give today, So which is the topic of our talk. So what is Jetpack Compose? So this is the first question that would uh, come to your mind or my mind whenever when I heard about first time, like I was like, okay, what is this new thing? So basically, as per the, uh, if you visit the Android uh, documentation about Jetpack Compose, it is like Jetpack Compose is a Android's modern UI toolkit for building native UI. Uh, so the, which was designed to create the UI like in the old days, like in today's days, even we used to design a UI with XML. But uh, this is the new way of uh, defining our components and designing our views. So Jetpack yeah, Compose is a modern UI toolkit for Android, uh, which is declarative. Like uh, we have uh, different uh, different uh, programming languages where we uh, do this kind of def uh, declarative UI. And uh, instead of imperative UI, we do that declarative. So Compose is again the declarative UI thing. Uh, it is built from the scratch, like the whole API of Jetpack Compose, which is uh, built from the scratch and uh, not on the any view layer or anything like that. Uh, also, it is the uh, it is the like you in the way you can design the UI by using Kotlin available API. Like you can build your native UI with Kotlin, uh, so without no need of XML. Uh, also, it is like a less code. So when I started exploring this compose, so I realized, okay, on the XML for so just to uh, centering a view or maybe applying some padding margin, we had to write a lot of things, but uh, in, in our normal term. But also apart from that, uh, you know, defining animations and everything, uh, which is very simple compared to other XML thing. And it is intuitive, like uh, the code and whatever you define looks very pretty and it's very like easy to design and define your views. And also main thing is it also fits with your existing code base. So suppose I have my uh, existing code base where I'm using XML and Kotlin or maybe XML Java Kotlin or something like that. So I can uh, upgrade my project and add the dependencies for Compose and I can easily start using the Compose API with the existing uh, code base. So that is the thing. Uh, now we would be, uh, we as we know, like what is Compose? So wh why Jetpack Compose? Like what was the need uh, to uh, you know reinvent the will when we were already having the uh, legacy UI system? So uh, for this, we can go back to the history of uh, like our Android. Uh, so if uh, if i remember so my first phone which i used was the gingerbread so it was like around i don't remember but it was around when uh, 2012 or 13 something that i had my first phone uh, which was on android and today when we see like uh, with the release of android 12 uh, there is a quite big evolution like when we can see the screen which were earlier in 2.1 or 2.2 uh, operating system. Then we had this uh, material design which was introduced in Lollipop system that is Android 5.0. And today, like uh, we have in Android 12, uh, 12 which is material you uh, like you, it would be like unique experience for each of the Android user. So since the uh, UI has been evolved, uh, the screen sizes has been evolved. Like if you remember, you might have the Galaxy Y phone, which was very compact and small, which had very less RAM. And but in today's, we have uh, foldable devices. We have phone with uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, and uh, you know, 
lot of storage and everything. So the Android evolution has been happened. So that is the need. Like we now user expectation is they need a very uh, elegant, beautiful UI. They need very faster uh, and animations and everything. So for that, to make it easy for developers, uh, it was the need to you know uh, re redesign everything from the scratch and uh, make it easy to adapt for as well. So that was the reason which uh, Jetpack Compose came up. So how Compose is different from XML? Uh, so generally, we if we see the few points which uh, I have found, so which is like uh, when you define uh, the UI in Compose and this thing, it is it is very different because uh, when we see like declarative, so declarative means like uh, that that focuses on what uh, rather than like how. So basically, imperative UI focuses on how, like how means like you define your views uh, firstly, like you define your layouts and components in XML. Like suppose you have a list of data where you have to show some uh, available uh, list of uh, user items. And in case if you are not able to get that data, what you will do is you will uh, show your text. So now what will happen is like your view will be first of all having all the UI. So like it will having the list, it would have a text view. According to that, what you will do is you will set the visibility, you will set the uh, data, and uh, you will set the text, and you have to do a lot of stuff. In case if you have a view where you have to uh, uh, adjust some views, like depending on like, okay, if, if you get uh, two items, then you have to show on the screen dividing into two sections. But in case if you have one, you have to show only one. So you have to write all those if, if else conditions, and you also have to define your UI first way. So that is like the design focuses on how, like rather than what. So that is our uh, XML system where we define our widgets and components, and then it is rendered to user to interact with. And what happens in declarative is like this. Uh, this is the you know latest uh, pat uh, pat pattern which we see. Uh, so it is like in Swift UI, you have in Flutter, you have in React Native, where what happens is like your data decides the UI. So it is like what to be shown, what. So that is a question here comes. So Depending on your data, your view would be getting set. So, like it is a data driven uh, UI, you can say. So, it would be like you will get the data. And if your list is not empty, then you will set the list. Like you will uh, create your list. In case your list is empty, you will skip that list and you will uh, define your text view or whatever component is there. So, that is the first thing like uh, XML focusing on how and Compose focusing on what. Uh, also, in XML, you have uh, to keep uh, the track of two languages, which is XML and Java or Kotlin, and maybe like Java Kotlin if you are keeping in your project. Uh, but in case of Compose, you can write your uh, both the business logic and your UI, which is created in Kotlin. So you don't have to keep a separate uh, like definition for your layouts and everything. So you don't need that layout wala folder and XML thing. And the next thing is like theme where generally set in manifest. And if you if you are aware, like uh, for the dark and night uh, theme, which was uh, recently uh, getting uh, defined in the Android project whenever you create a new project, so it was into day and night theme. Uh, again, it was like you know defining manifest and everything. But uh, if defining the custom layout, like if you want to have uh, multiple color themes, like you know uh, blue, black, and day, night, and etc. So it was bit difficult into define into manifest uh, and into xml but uh, with material design theme like you compose comes with the predefined material design theme so you have a uh, uh, your uh, a kotlin file where you have defined your material theme and in that you can customize your ui whatever variant you want and in xml you have to keep a separate track for xml like uh, colors file day night mode etc but in uh, compose you can define your properties including your shape, typography, and colors, everything into Kotlin. So that is, again, a very uh, pretty, in my opinion, it looks very uh, easy to understand. And uh, yeah, in XML, it was not so easy state management. And uh, uh, what I mean by that is, like, uh, in case you get a list of user data and, uh, you know, you have to uh, do some modification or you have to customize your view, you have to define Predefine everything in your XML, and then you have to set that uh, you know define your recycler view adapter, and then define your item view, set that data, and uh, in case any data changes, like user is uh, tapping, suppose user is uh, there is a button where uh, you are uh, showing the counter, 
so user is tapping like plus 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 and you have to every time whenever user presses plus icon you have to do the increment also set the text in that text field or maybe update your ui so which was in kind not that easy state management uh but in compose everything is since data driven so whatever your data changes accordingly the ui gets recomposed so in short we can say that ui is uh ui is recreated but uh compose system is smart enough to uh create the only piece of ui which has to be you know uh, recomposed so that is we call a recompose one where every time your uh data changes it automatically reflects the ui so you don't have to worry about getter setter text and visibility handling and all that so that is the main difference between xml and compose uh so this is just a sample like you know a piece of uh code where i want to show that okay how this works so let me see here so in XML, we have this thing like uh, if list is not empty, we create the adapter, we create the item view, we set the adapter recycler view, we handle the visibility, etc. And else we set the error text and handle visibility. In compose, if list is not empty, we simply call a function uh, composable function, which is uh, we would be seeing that later on uh, in our live demo. So this would be triggering the whole list. And in case if data is empty, then we would be showing a text view like no data found. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, so that was enough, I guess, uh, about the introduction and, and you can also, uh, learn about on going to the official documentation and, uh, read about it later on. So, uh, since with the basics and, uh, you know, why and what we need. So as I have explained that, let's build our first compose app. So building the compose app, uh, first of all, you require the Android studios, Arctic, uh, Arctic Fox version. So basically, this is the, the new versioning system for Android Studio, like uh, we had in Android OSs, like Pitcat and Lollipop and etc. So now the Android Studio would be coming with a naming version, which would be starting from A, that is Arctic Fox, and uh, which is currently in beta version. So you have to download the uh, beta version of Android Studio. Uh, since it's not uh, stable, uh, like not allowed, uh, release the version, it's not available right now. So you can visit the developer. Uh, android.com slash studio slash preview and you can download the beta version earlier compose was available only in the canary version but now since the uh with the google io they have updated the android studio to the beta build so you can download that once you have downloaded with the android studio you can do the basic sdk setup and uh, emulator setup whatever you want to customize according to your experience uh once you have done with that uh as usual, we go to the new project. Uh, so basically, why I'm showing this is like in case uh, if there are developers who are uh, not familiar with Android uh, Studio and Android ecosystem, they can also understand okay how we create a Android project with Compose. So uh, this is the how you do is you go to a new project and you select the phone and tablet and you select the empty Compose activity. Currently, there are uh, uh, only blank activity available, not uh, like the other we have in XML. So you can select the Android uh, empty compose activity. Once you have done with that, uh, you will be able to see something like this. So this would be your uh, uh, basic project structure, which I try to cover uh, almost all the important items like uh, the uh, the package file where we define our uh, logic. And this is related to our uh, drawables resources thing. And this is our main activity, which is an empty activity, which we selected. So this is a pretty basic project structure. Uh, if you are coming, like if you are an Android developer already and using XML, uh, you will notice one thing, like we are, we don't have layout folder here. Uh, so that is a thing. Also like click items and views and you won't be finding anything here. Also, if you notice, we have this uh, package where ui.theme is there. Uh, so this is the color.kt uh, file, this is shape.kt file, then theme.kt file, type.kt, and this is our main activity, which is the uh, our screen, which is visible to the user. I'll be explaining uh, what all these files are in a while. So basically, I want to want to tell that uh, the project currently, which we are seeing is, uh, it comes with a uh, material theme out of the box. Like you don't have to define your uh, you know, like day night theme, or you don't have to define colors and everything it is already predefined for you and all the material components and uh, material views and layouts has been supporting in compose as well so you don't have to worry about that so let's uh, break down like 
each filing. Uh, so main thing in Compose when you start, uh, so these are the new things which you, you would be finding uh, in the your project structure. So I thought let let me just explain uh, what this file look like. So what I have done is I have just uh, uh, clip out the file what if the content was there and I have tried to you know uh, explain in one slide so that would be easier to understand and I can easily sh uh, show the comparison and what is related to what. So first of all, this is the application wide theming. Uh, and what does this mean is uh, if you have uh, uh, seen the earlier slide, let's go back to the slide. Uh, you can see that here we are setting the content. So here we have a set content. Uh, so if you are from an already using XML theme, you remember there is some function called set content view. And in that we used to pass our layout ID. So since we don't have XML, so we directly set our content. And in that you can see this is my project name, which is hello world. So it is like hello world theme. So this is the name of my theme, which is uh, been generated by Compose. And what does that theme means? Let's go back to our next slide. Okay. So if you see here, we have defined this function, which is the hello world theme. And in that hello world theme, you can uh, we are using uh, the variable dark theme, which is uh, a boolean which is showing that the system in dark theme so by default if your user is doing dark mode uh the the project or uh, the application would be showing in dark theme if it is false it would be showing in a light theme so for that we have this uh lambda function where we have uh, the if condition like if the colors are uh, you know, dark theme we show a dark color palette else we show a light color palette now from where this palette are coming so if you go on the top you can see there is a light color palette which we have already defined uh which is a list of colors and uh, which is like light colors uh so these are the properties which uh, comes with predefined with compose so light color has the uh, three colors defined for now which is primary uh purple 500 primary variant purple 700 and secondary which is still 200 and uh, dark color palette also comes up uh, which is somewhere on, on top of the uh you know screen on which i had i haven't covered in this thing so it also we find similarly dark color palette and uh, you can also define multiple color palette depending on like you can define your blue color palette white color orange multiple things you can keep in your project and then we have this material theme uh, so material theme we set our colors whatever are there so we set our palette we set a set of typography, shapes, and content. So colors for that, if you notice, we have the purple color and all that. So which is defined into the color.kt file. So color.kt file has all your colors. So uh, in Android XML, we used to keep our colors in values folder. So defining uh, like item name and then defining a color. But we defined here as a color of property. So we have already color function where we pass our uh, RGB code and Paint values and we set uh, the we create the colors. Then we have this typography. So typography is coming from this type dot kt folder. Uh, something this is uh, this can be new for uh, as an Android app as well. For me, for me it was new uh, because if I remember while whenever I had to set font, I used to go into XML. I used to set my font which has been defined into font family uh but again like in case if i want to you know define my whole uh like my personal uh, font kind of uh, typography i used to have into xml and create a style and different thing but in compose with uh, material theming you can define your typography property like this so you have this uh, so this is our body one variant where we have this text type uh, which is which has font family default here we can define a custom font uh, we can define a weight and font sizes and different stuff we can define it and next time wherever you want to use this typography you can simply call material theme dot uh, you know typography dot body one and you can get that uh, style in your wherever project you want last is shape uh, shape is something kind of again new like uh, if i remember i have never declared any kind of shape uh, into my styles or somewhere <clears throat> it was possible and maybe uh, people are using it but it is uh, unique, like uh, suppose you have a, a card view uh, where you want to show you know, different kind of uh, uh, corner radiuses or maybe you have a, a view where you want to set the different shapes. So you can define your shapes here. And uh, even depending on your uh, dimensions, maybe you can use this property. Like uh, if, if somewhere uh, your device is very small, you can you know, keep this uh, 
dimension for the radius if some medium and large so this is the round corner corner shape property which comes again out of the box so this is the application wide uh, theming uh, properties so let's take a pause here and uh, tell whatever we have or, you know try to understand and let's see like if anyone has any doubt so in case if anyone has doubt i can you know clear out like uh, related to theming and everything so you can put in your uh, chat section and uh, i can have a look if anything is there uh okay so there are already a few questions there uh okay so uh okay so is is there something like uh swift ui that that's there for ios uh like swift ui uh, ui i haven't used like i have never like uh, you know uh, been through this uh, ios uh, development uh but to, since uh, i have heard uh, from my uh you know uh developers like friend who are doing into ios so they say okay, like in swift ui we somewhat defined like this so yeah which is uh, again declarative swift ui is declarative react native is declarative flutter is declarative so you can say which is this is also very similar to you know swift ui as well uh jetpack uh looks promising indeed both ui and can be done in one language yeah that's really nice I mm, about state, but don't get really what is stateless in compose and state hosting, and any discussion will be appreciated. Yeah, sure. I will try to, uh, you know, cover about uh, state, but again, uh, state is uh, in compose. It is kind of pretty easy compared to you know Flutter, as I have uh, used Flutter uh, in like, very uh, in start on level, but I have used Flutter, so I can say compose. We have a very easily defined state so whenever you want to have a data where uh, data is going to change or you want to interactive uh, views you define the uh, property with using the remember state uh, function so once you define the rem remember state you whenever your state changes uh, automatically your data will reflect i will try to cover in the live demo uh, is it similar to react yeah again it's similar to factor react and compose which are again declarative so but just similar so i guess there are no uh, questions ahead so let's proceed further okay so now uh this would be a very new thing for uh, all the android developers and uh, if and if you are coming from other platform like flutter or something this would be very much pretty similar but for android developer it was completely new uh for me it was completely new because uh uh i have started my development from like uh, when there was like linear layout then it was relative layout and i guess after one or one year something uh constraint layout was announced and uh, i started using constraint layout and still now like developer prefer constraint layout for defining the uh complex views and uh making it more uh you know like re resizable according to the devices uh but in compose this aspect uh changes a bit so in compose uh, we have kind of uh you know foundation level we have this three things which is column row and box uh so let's talk about column uh as per the you know this uh, block diagram you can easily understand this are the blocks which are cap uh, top of the each other so it is like simpler to understand like on one on the uh top of each other like it's like a linear layout uh where you have set the orientation vertical or it is a relative layout where a view is uh, defined like to the bottom of the top view so something like that you can understand this column uh so you don't have to worry about you know defining the orientation and uh, scaling and everything and uh, like behavior and uh, relation with each other views so you don't have to worry about that so column is a very uh like foundation level layout where you can put your items on top of the each other this is the row. Uh, row is equivalent to linear layout, and where we've set orientation to vertical, and uh, something like in relative layout on the left, on the right of the view. So this is something like this horizontal thing. So this is our uh, uh, row, and this is our box. Box is something like a frame layout, or uh, maybe I guess uh, equivalent to stack. Stack something, yeah. I guess in Swift UI or something we have stack, and Flutter also we have stack. So stack it like you whatever you views are there it will be showing on the uh top on the top of that view so that will be something looking like that so in case you have a background something like this and you want to show a button or text view you can put it like this also for creating compose like complex complex layout in compose we have this constraint layout also where you can define your uh, view hierarchy 
by uh, like if you are very you know use, useful to come uh, constantly out and you want to create very complex layout uh you have to integrate uh you have to you know include the dependency it doesn't come uh into predefined projects so you have to add the constant layout dependency also you can create your custom layout uh so flutter uh sorry as flutter also we can do this uh, custom layout similarly we can compose also we can define our custom layout by simply using the layout tag so which is possible again in check that compose and uh, what are the uh, you know out of the box uh, ui components and also that material theming supported components so these are the components which are available out of the box so your first component we see is a text uh, so text is equivalent to text view where you can uh set or maybe display a message or whatever thing is there and we have a button uh, which is again button button we have in our android which is button material button and something like this so since compose comes with material theming so this button by default comes with the material theming property uh you can define the on click behavior uh, which is again a lambda block you can define your functions uh you can have this text you can define your uh, text and different you can also put your icons here then we have this image block so image component is nothing but our image view where you can pass your uh, layout id and uh, content description where like what is this uh, image or pro uh, profile picture or something like that so people who don't uh, people who are using you know like blind people who are cannot enter uh, like view the system they can easily interact and understand okay what is this uh, view so you can define your image like this we have this card card is again like a card view so that is you can define your uh, like whatever functions are and components are there inside that card view we have top app bar which is similar to toolbar and our action bar and then we have a floating action button which is again uh, on click properties and you can pass the icon and everything so these are the very basic components which i thought like we as a developer we use in our day to day projects so i thought of sharing those uh, uh, components with you guys so now next uh, main thing which uh, which i wanted to uh, share with you was the modifier thing so modifier is quite a uh, quite a new thing for android developer and i guess even you are from flutters and so the, this is something new as you can uh, pass the modifier which is again a uh, you know object function where you define your uh, uh, whatever the customization is there and you can pass the modifier to any view which you want in compose so what is modifier so modifier allow you to decorate or augment a composable so in short if we have a text view uh, like say you want to set some property uh you want to set some width height or you want to uh set some shape uh, which doesn't come into that component like text view doesn't have a elevation or uh, shape so what you can do is you can define it by using a modifier uh so in simple terms if i tell you what is modifier so modifier is a set of uh, you know customizable properties which you pass as a bundle to a view in very simple term so what you can do is uh with uh, modifier you can uh, these are the few which i have listed which you can define a size like uh, you want to define the width of a layout so you will define it as like 120 dp so you can put it into like modifier dot size dot 100 dp uh, then dot width dot 100 dp something like that you can set the alignment uh, you have a you have a view like uh, which is uh, you have to put it in center so you can put it like alignment like alignment dot align center horizontally you can define the layout behavior you can define the appearance you can make it clickable you can make it an any view clickable so suppose you have a card view uh, which which previously wasn't coming out of the box of clickable and uh, if it is not clickable and you're not trying to uh, add a on click uh, listener what it will be happening is it would be allowing you to click but sometimes the the click effect that is a ripple effect won't be coming on that view but if you define the modifier as clickable your by default your ripple effect comes in also you can make uh, any views playable uh, so if you remember in our uh, past slide uh, there were column row and uh, box layout so how can you make a you know scroll view in compose so you can do it very easily you can make a column and you can define the behavior as scrollable by using a scrollable modifier that's it so it will become automatically your view will become scrollable 
So this were the modifiers. Uh, till now, if anyone has any doubt, let's see. Okay, so what sort of code architecture would you re recommend while using? Uh, is there something like? Okay, we can. Uh, yeah, we can discuss this. So in short, if I say. Uh, Jetpack Compose is since data driven UI. So from wherever your data stream comes up, it can easily uh, can be displayed and uh, you know rendered into a view. So the recommended architecture and you know the most suitable architecture for Android, which is MVVM, and uh, I guess it is used by almost all the project in all the project. So yeah, MVVM fits well with the Compose. So what you can do is you define your uh, live data in the view, and you can then observe as state. So whatever your live data is there, there is an extension function in Kotlin where you can uh, like change that uh, data into state. So then you can easily take that uh, into view. So that is you can do. Also, in case uh, there are developers which are now think that uh, we don't need live data since we have this uh, flow with us and uh, in Compose we have state. So you can directly take the state uh, from view model and you can define that which is equivalent to Live data. So there are examples which, which I have saw which uh, uses uh, the state instead of directly using live data. So yeah, MVVM would be a suitable architecture. Can we use existing view object in Compose? Yes, you can use it. This is a very good uh, thing. Like it is interoperable. And uh, for example, if we say you want to show a map map view, or maybe you want to show a exo player view into your Compose, and Compose doesn't have that for now. So how you can do? So there is an Android view thing. Where you can inflate your layout and uh, you can set that view. I haven't experimented much with that, uh, but I want to do. I want to add one of the exo player view and I want to check how does uh, work exactly. But yes, you can use the view. HTML guys, yeah. So, but like this is a very new thing which you can do. What will be the demo about? I missed the starting bit. Okay, so I would be showing some demo. So basically, uh, I had one project uh, which uh, I I did in like thirty days of Kotlin. And it was a really nice project, so I thought to redesign the same with uh, Compose. So if if I'm you know uh, sharing the project with someone, so they can easily understand. Okay, this is how it is done in uh, XML, and this is how you can do in Compose. Like uh, when I'm looking for example on you know open source, mostly I see new projects which come up with uh, like this Compose. So if you want to compare like how Compose and XML works, it would be a bit difficult. So I would be trying to. Showcase my that cook dot project. So let's see. Okay, then get ready for a live demo. So just give me a minute. Uh, I take a pause and you know I open my Android Studio system. So just give me a minute. Okay, so my Android Studio is open. Now I can share my project. Okay, so this is my emulator, which is already run here. Uh, so now if we go to our, uh, okay, so, uh, those were uh, like, you know, wondering if it is possible to use XML with uh, Compose and, you know, vice versa. Yes, it is possible. So this was my project, which I made uh, in the 30 days of Kotlin and uh, the JDG India, like they really liked my project. And uh, so I was also featured in this. So this is my existing project. So if you see, I already have this layout folder, font folder, drawables and the navigation. So everything I have already defined here. So you can say this is our legacy system. And what we are trying to do is now, uh, I will try to create a new activity, which would be again in Compose. So in case if you are new to Android and you want to learn how to create activity, you can easily see this. So we uh, click or right click on our uh, package folder. I select uh, end uh, activity, like I go to activity and uh, let's search for Compose activity. Okay, we don't find here. So where it is, oh, we have this Compose separately. So we can go to compose and select empty activity. And uh, now let's make it uh, name as home activity. Okay. 
uh, since already I have a uh, main activity in my project, so let's name it as home activity and package and everything would be same. Okay. So this will take a uh, few seconds. Uh, also to share that, uh, compose my or seem perfect over to you guys, but uh, this is a beta version and they are trying to optimize optimize it. So if you see like uh, this guy's process is started in normal legacy system, it might take only one two seconds, but here it might take ten. So let's understand screen. Okay. So if you see, we have this. And if if I compare it to my legacy, okay. Also, you can see there's already of uh, this that is updated by Compose. But anyways, if I show you my legacy code, uh, which was into main activity, so this was our code where which you to extend the app compact activity, and uh, now we have this component activity which is uh, getting extended. Uh, compared to here, we have this set content view in our on create. Here we have uh, an on create. We have the set content. So instead of set content view, we have set content uh, where you can see that automatically compose has uh, you know generated my. So this is my project name cook dot it, which is hook it, and it has generated a theme. Uh, we can go to this theme, but let's first understand this activity. So so this is our. Uh, View system where you can see there's a car hook it theme and there's one surface which is kind of a layer where we would be displaying our components and there we have this uh, function which we are calling it as greeting and it is we are passing a string parameters as uh, as an argument which is Android. Okay, and now you can see this is a function which we have defined here. Uh, so with the function name is greeting and you can see the annotation composable. So, like generally, whenever we used to define functions, something like that, like function sum of like maybe you're doing sum of two numbers, you will define this kind of thing. But if you annotate it with composable, it becomes a composable function. That is like a UI related uh, function which you are building. Uh, just a small, you know, tip kind of thing, or maybe I want to uh, share that. Like whenever you define a composable function, uh, the it is not in you know. Like uh, it, the first letter won't be small. It would be always be with the cam ca like capital letter. So generally, uh, we used to define a normal function. We would be going with the camel case kind of thing like this. But in composable, uh, we defined it this way. Uh, so this is just a naming convention which composable function follows. Then if you see, we have this uh, greeting where we have this text view uh, which uh, says uh, text, and we pass in a uh, hello and name. And uh, also one thing which is good in compose. Uh, which is a preview thing. Like in case, uh, if you as in as an exam uh, example, we used to have a view side by side, like what we are creating. So we have now in Kotlin file, and you can see it will show you the preview here. Uh, Android something. Uh, you know, liking this preview thing. The reason is that it takes a bit of time. Uh, instead, what I can do is in this time, I can run my application on a real emulator or a real physical device and I can check it. So uh, I don't like this, but it is it, in future, it would become optimized and it would be a really nice thing. So still, let uh, me not finished yet. Uh, so this is our XML file where we have this launcher activity. What I'm going to change uh, do is I will change my home activity to become my launcher activity, so that whenever we launch our application, this will be viewable. Okay, so now I'm uh, commenting this preview. Uh, I could have show you like how this is it, but it's very fine. So let me be meanwhile we can run and see So also. Instant run will be kind of uh, glitching in Compose, so you you have to you know read on the action each time you do. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Compose team is working really on, uh, like uh, very much on this car digging out the stable version. So they, they have given a deadline which is like uh, July they would be coming out of the Compose the stable version. So by that time, it uh, the Arctic. Uh, 
So let's hope for that. So I'm expecting by August we should take off this thing. Okay. So uh, hey Chintan. Hello. Chintan, hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, actually, sorry, I don't know, but your voice is breaking. Can you just check once? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So is it is it proper now? Yeah, now it is, but in uh, like last five minutes, okay. it was continuously okay. breaking. Okay. I tried so, to interrupt okay. you, but yeah. Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Yeah. So I would keep uh, looking at track on the chat section in case anything is there. Just ping me. I will try to be slow down. Uh, yeah, sure. I assume there might be some internet glitch or something, but I hope okay, yeah. it doesn't happen yeah. sure. again. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So now we have this. Yeah, of time and you are wondering what to do. So, okay. So, anyways, this is our home activity, which I set as launcher activity. Now you can see this hello Android view is there. Uh, I'm I'm removing this preview block because I don't want to change it. Uh, like I don't want to uh, want the compose to rebuild my view every time I'm changing something. So what I put my name there, hello Chintan. So hello Chintan. Let's uh, hope. So, okay. so we have something to ah, okay. So we have this hello Chintan here. Uh, so if you remember, this was a composable function. So that means, like, whatever I do make a changes here, it will automatically reflect to my you know uh, declaration or wherever my I'm calling the function. So let's give a try. What I will do is I'll define a button. Uh, auto complete view is also a bit slower, but Okay, and now here my text, uh, which is coming from the so instead of like I will pass it here. Now I have just changed text here and uh, define my button here. So if you go into your view, the click listener, but here you don't have to worry, which is a really nice. Okay, so you see there is a material come button which is already out of the box. You can see the click effect, which is also a text click me. So this is a very simple function in Compose which you can do, and uh, this is what okay which we have already seen. Now, interesting part I want to show you is uh, let's let's show you what I want to explain and show. Uh, so this is my fragment home emulator. And this is my XML layout, which I define uh, using, you know, constant layout and relative layout combined. And here I have my items, which is displayed uh, here. So if I switch to design view, and uh, here I have my recycler view, where is my recycler view? Okay, so here is my recycler view. Uh, what I will do is I will just add a item to you know show at least I can understand how the user uh, it will get refreshed. I want to put a private here. I want to show that just then. Okay, so yeah. So now you can see we have this uh, Layout where we have this lunch recipes and we have a recipe item. Uh, each of the food items are there. And uh, on the top, we have this search bar, uh, which is kind of a text view and a button. So I want to redesign it in Compose. So how can I do it? So let's see. Uh, first, I will show you my current uh, current thing which I had built. So for search bar, this is my app bar card, uh, which is like a search bar card. 
so which was uh, defined using card view which in italy had a relative layout and uh, image view with menu item and the text view so basically what my target was like by clicking on this i will take the user to next screen so generally even if you see in the like you know many of the application where you want to search something so search mostly goes on to the next screen to you know give a good animation and also to make application lighter and uh, then i had this text view uh, which was again a text view and then a recycle view uh, if you are an android developer you know how hectic it is to make a recycle view you have to define your recipe item which is again a like item of card view you have to define your adapter here which is a list adapter and you have to define all those code but compose it you will think it is a very logical thing uh, so why i'm talking so much okay let's do it so first what i will do is i will create a new function which i will call it as search bar okay so let's uh, annotate it at compose table and uh, we, we give it a name function search bar following the naming convention okay so now i have my function search bar here okay uh define main active okay so maybe i have defined it somewhere let's name it to search uh search bar, search bar card okay so now it is solved so yeah so now we have the search bar card uh so if i go back to my design it so first i need a card view okay so let's define our card view here so for card view we simply have to write card and once we have defined my card view let's see so instead we have this uh, navigation button and then we have our text view so uh, for uh, uh, you know showing a button or something we have a separate property which is called icon which is really nice in my opinion so here icon we have uh, two properties one is content description and one is the painter uh, so what is a painter so painter is uh, simply uh, your i can say a resource by which you pass your id or maybe some internal available icon like in flutter when we want to show some icon we use icons dot uh, you know favorite or something like that and in setting our image we use that uh, we pass like tryable at the rate our uh, png or svg id so similarly we can pass it here uh, also content description which is you can keep it null uh, but i uh, give some uh, like text so people who can't see they can easily understand okay uh, what you're defining so now for my this thing what i want to do is i want to define my painter resource so which is again available function and now i can pass my id so which is very simple so you don't have to write other code so i have my menu thing i guess i should have my menu uh baseline menu okay let's pay why it is not showing mm, yeah sometimes it won't refresh oh, sorry. okay so let's copy the name of that item here and put it here okay so it should get okay i guess we will have to manually import the package or okay, let's uh refresh it or maybe let's see what uh, we can import it we can import the variables uh, here so let's rebuild our project added or in, in case it
Finished the we'll input data thing. Okay, so this is the type of card we have the icon, we have this text. So this, this should eventually think of what we want. I will cancel this simple since it's taking a lot of time. Okay. What is related to our card? So to see what are available for a card. We have background color, we have color, and all. So According to what I need is currently, I need some elevation. So let's put some elevation here. So let's put elevation 20 dot dp. Uh, this is something interesting. Like, uh, where if you want to define something, you don't write 20 dp, you write 20 dot dp. So which is a Kotlin extension function, which will convert your uh, value into the tensor effects. And uh, now what all we need is we, I guess we need shape. I need my shape. So I will give this a rounded form and shape. Okay. And uh, I given the radius to be 20 dp. I think let's be just experimenting. Okay. How it will look. And we need to give some padding. Uh, okay. One thing to share in compose, we don't have a separate component called margin. So in generally with text view or card, we used to have a component where we used to give margin and then we used to give padding. Here we have only single thing, which is padding. So if we want to give some padding here, we can simply give here, like I can define modifier, modifier. Uh, you can see there are option like dot clickable, dot hide. I will choose that. So how much padding should I give? I can give it like 20 dp. Let's see everything 20 and see what happens. And uh, yeah, this is done. Uh, what I can do is to make this, uh, you know, size, uh, like a text, uh, like whatever my toolbar size is there. Uh, since if you uh, pay attention in my XML, like defining my card view, I had given this action bar size. So here, what I will do is I will wrap my this content into a top bar, top M bar. So what will happen is like my this view will take only the you know space required for a simple action bar or toolbar. You can say so that what I will do, and uh, maybe I can put it into row since it is uh, horizontally aligned, and. Uh, Let's put down here this way. And let's see if we rerun the application, what we can see. Uh, nothing will be able to see because we didn't call our function. So instead of reading, I will call my function. I guess we will have to read application because I forgot to call the function. I hope this is the alternative to margin is there's guiding only. So what we do is we can't okay. uh, we can do screen up uh, I think I could keep a layout if if in context view uh, to give a margin relative yeah, so my screen, yeah, yeah, actually it was getting better. But uh, believe me, this will be very game changing. Like I, I once we have you divided know, and structure, what I will do is I go some very well and you will get I mean still and uh,
Okay, so meaning of using is extremely sense and I guess meaning there's some element that I have again. It is I hope like you are getting something new things to learn. So that would be big. I think Hey, Chintan. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, we are not able to hear you properly. Your voice is breaking. Can you just check once, please? I had texted previously, but padding uh... works like margin compose. Hello, uh, guys, can you hear me now? Yeah, now we can, but in between, it's break. okay. Maybe, like, uh, you know, what is happening is like I'm running Android Studio and also I'm sh sharing my screen, so maybe that would be reasonable. So in case anything happens, not just ping here in chat. I will keep looking at that. Uh, okay. So anyways, guys, you you can see we have already this thing. Our uh, search bar card is created within few seconds. I would say, and uh, since the card follows the material guidelines, let let change the background color. Uh, background. Uh, I want to use background color, okay, for machine. And uh, let's pass our thing dot color start background. And what is the background? Let's check once. Or maybe what I can do is I can define my one color, or maybe we can use our. Uh, Primary color. So, anyways, this thing yeah. if you could Uh, this is and define your color you have defined this if we go to our color.kt file sorry theme.kt file and if we have my primary color as this purple this thing if i make it uh, color color dot white so it will become I find spreading to the after my card. So what is happening is it is getting uh it is getting down like of by twenty by thirty dp from this guideline or a constraint layout. So eventually, if I pass a padding top, uh, padding bottom, or padding top, this to this uh, my outer layer, it will give a padding to here, this thing, and it will eventually give uh, this thing uh, a padding and margin kind of thing. So that way you can define. Okay, so this doesn't this didn't reflect here. Okay, so why it happened? Oh, okay. 
so uh, currently i guess my light color palette is getting used and what i did is i changed the color dark palette so hope this time it doesn't happen if i show you one how and should this become layout quickly see something interesting which i want to really show you guys okay so you can see we have this white color thing and since our text color is also a white which is said so we can give a text you can see we have the same different properties we can simply give a color okay color dot right color dot black okay so what is the issue okay i have applied the color and what is it on with the color property color product. okay so i want color from android compose ui graphics which i didn't use that so basically what happened like when i wrote color na, so there were two two things this was like android graphics color which i didn't want it so that was the mistake here happened and now if we remove this and we can simply import the import and now this time we'll import compose ui dot graphics so this thing will be happening with you guys also like uh, since we have now we have color related to our system so, uh, so yeah so this view will okay so you can see what are you looking for we have this and since this view is again in uh you know white color what i will do is i will just uh, remove this function and uh, i had already written a composable function for search now so which i already wrote in case anything you know breaks out so this is my search bar function so if i show you that which is uh just but i just applied a few color since we are also running out of time so yeah you can see this is how it will look so if i go to my search bar so you can see i have this card and then i have a top bar then i have a title text which i have given color gray we have this base menu and tint and a background color which is color dot white so this was my function for search bar similarly i had also written this at the rate uh, recipe item function uh, so what is recipe item so which is equivalent to my this complete view so recipe item is again taking a card which has a rounded corner shape it has a modifier where i have given a width of 200 dp so since I, my uh, list is into a uh, vertical scrolling so that's why i've given a width fixed width i've given some padding uh i have made the uh height to it wrap content height i have made that card clickable i have given some elevation and in that card now i have a thing which is a column so if you remember column shows one component to the bottom of each other so if you see into my xml uh we have this three item which are you know on top of each other like we have image view of this dosa we have a title and we have our uh, cooking time thing so we have again same thing here we have done that so first thing i have this image view where i have passed my image of dosa then we have some spacer so spacer is nothing but uh, empty related space or maybe you if you, in case you don't want to give some padding uh, on the top of your view you can simply specify a uh, spacer so spacer is again nothing but a uh, empty space and then we have a text of cheese dosa then we have a spacer and this all things so now since our recipe items ready okay what happen if i display my recipe item here okay so that Turn of the camera process, 
participants have that but uh, i am into pro process of you know uh, restructuring one of my you know application with compose like one of, there is one application uh, related to my religious ritual things which is already uh, uploaded uh, uploaded in play store so i'm rewriting the whole application in compose so once i'm done with that uh, i will uh, be you know sharing the uh, i will be sharing that uh, making it open source so others can learn from it uh, I will remove this color from here for now. I don't want any colors to be specified. I hope it should be now. Okay, so here we can see our recipe item uh, with text and everything. And uh, yeah, so this is how it will look eventually. So now what we do is, uh, okay, so we have this text view. Let's give it a text color quickly. I forgot to write the color. Okay, color, color dot black. Uh, same thing here. So anyway, so we can see our display, but what I want a list of my recipe items. So first, I also want a search bar on my top of the so again uh, is on the top of each other components a column which we define a search bar we have already you know created earlier okay and uh, yeah meanwhile you can see we have this output cheese dosa cooking time and etc uh, we we will not modify much of this alignment and everything for now because since it's already getting late. So now now what I want is I want to show my search bar and recipe item both in one. If I, let's see what happens if I do it in column. Okay. So okay. So now you can see we have this very decent looking UI which is on the top. There is a search bar. Uh, this is a button which is again navigation related button and then we have this thing and uh, but what I want you can see the click effect on this uh, thing so now what I want is I want a list of my recipe items uh, if you are an Android developer you know this is a very painful thing you have to define your uh, different stuff but don't worry in uh, compose it is very simple uh, like column we have a lazy column which is again equivalent to our Recycler view with layout manager set as vertical. So let's put it inside our uh, this lazy column. We can put our list of items here. So let's assume that we have a list of item which has size of five. So this is just I'm giving the hard coded value. What you will see is now the list will be taking the item. Like basically, you can put your whatever something like that. But anyways, I have just uh, given a hard coded value. Like I want want my items to be five. Type. Okay, so now you can see we have this five beautiful composed items. But if you remember, my default view has to show in the horizontal manner. It's very simple. Just replace lazy column with lazy. That's it. And uh, now, if we rerun the application, you this capability of a very decent time. Okay, so now we have this beautiful layout and just this piece of code, which I really, really like it. And in case if you want, you know, more item between here, you can easily do that by putting whatever the text you want suppose you want to show some text in between here you can easily do that like break fast okay if we put this text and if we application this is nice it will run a little faster if it could have a very good anyways so now you, you may be able to see our text okay break pass which is there again we forgot to apply color so color dot black
Okay, so now you can see we have this breakfast text here. Uh, so yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, <clears throat> this is my bit of a polished UI. So we have a surface, we have a col column, we have a search bar, we have this lazy row and recipe item. If I just, uh, you know, uh, duplicate it, it will show me uh, two list of items. And this is my search bar and this is my this thing. So now if we just, uh, just run our this activity, which I already prefer. So now we would be full list of items. Let's see. Okay. So, and here we go. So, we have this beautiful list of. So, basically, you can pass your spring title IDs and you can eventually show the list here. Okay. So, this was the code which I wanted to show you guys. And let me know how to show you. Interesting, and you will be like, "Oh, wow! How how is this possible?" So let me just stop sharing screen my for a couple of seconds, and uh, yeah. So now, now I'm sharing my complete window, so I don't know how uh, this thing will work. Basically, what I want to show you is. Okay, so let me just show you my ID first. Okay, so guys, if you remember this uh, IntelliJ idea, which is a, a ID where you write your calculated programs and everything. Okay, so what is very amazing here it is. If you see, I have what I have done is I have copied the uh, code from my compose project to here. If you see. This is a compo column. This is a search bar. This is a lazy row, five times repeated res residue item. I have changed nothing. Nothing means nothing. I've just also added my dosas and menu related item icons here. And I have my recipe item, which I'm setting my dosa and I have spacer. Everything is same, right? Uh, now let me show you why I'm so excited about this compost thing. So here we go. So you can see we have this desktop application. So this is my desktop application. You can see. So which is again using the same code which I use in Compose, and uh, which is again like clickable items are there. You can click navigation items. This is the list. You can expand it and you can you know change the size level. And so this is really really amazing. Like without changing a piece of code, even a line of code, I have just added that code and uh, it it really feels amazing so yeah so that's the reason so you can see basically we have this main function which is calling a window we can we have our material theme where we have the surface where i have column and same thing so in case if you want to just experiment put the uh, jetpack compose for desktop what you can do is you can go to new project and uh, you can select the desktop application for Compose and it will be Jetpack, Jetpack Compose. Since it is experimental, but yeah, uh, Kotlin, which is our JetBrains teams, are also working a lot on that thing. And uh, and soon, like, uh, we can assume, like, uh, using same code base of Compose, we can design our desktop application as well. And the JetBrains team is also working on designing the, uh, design the designing the uh, API related to web. So web related API is also budget breaks team is working. So that should eventually uh, you know, get soon out. So if, if it get uh, you know out, so what will happen is you can create your application writing compose and desktop for web and uh, for other stuff. Okay, so I guess that was the what I wanted to show you guys. 
So this was our live coding session. Now you can post your questions or maybe if you want to ask them, I would request the management team to just uh, allow the participant to speak up. The questions are there. Okay, very nice demo. Thank you so much. Okay, so I guess there are no questions. Okay, thank you. So in case in case uh, you want to learn more about the Compose and uh, explore the sample application, like if you want to uh, learn about like related to Compose stuff and everything, you can visit the official documentation like developer.com slash Android and Jetpack Compose. And you can visit uh, the Google's uh, the Android uh, GitHub uh, page where you can find the Compose samples, which there are there are, I guess, five to six applications are there uh, demonstrating different uh, uh, you know, components and uh, view systems and everything. Uh, like I, I do refer from there a lot, like whenever I feel like, how can I design this? So which is really good. You can visit that. And uh, with that, I can say like the, the future is now. So since Compose will be coming in soon, uh, stable. So what you can do is you can start exploring it on weekends and everything. So you will start getting familiar and, uh, you know, you can also take the leverage of this wonderful API. So with that, thank you for joining. And uh, this is my website. And if you, if you want to reach me out, you can like reach me out on Twitter. You can follow me there. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. So thank you for joining guys. Uh, thank you, Chintan, so much for your amazing session. It was fun to learn about Jetpack Compose. I believe if there are more doubts, definitely this would contact you and try to reach out to you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. uh, well, we are indeed sorry that to inform that Uzwala won't be joining us today due to some issues with her laptop and connectivity. Uh, yes, so I would like to thank you all for joining us today uh, today during this difficult time. I also thank Chintan and Harsh for their amazing talks. It was indeed glad to hear from you all. Uh, please stay safe. Uh, we'll be hosting the event again in the next month. If you have any topics to share or want to conduct any workshops, please reach out to us. We'll be keeping the lobby open for next 20 minutes to interact and talk. Thank you once again. Stay safe and see you all for the next meetup. Uh, yes, Nisha, we won't be having the session, as I said. But yeah, we are keeping the lobby open. You can just interact with the speakers. Yeah.